So the book also introduced two uh, structural types of wooden frame in Chinese architecture. Um, the previous, you know, what we introduced so far <clears throat> using column supporting beam, beam supporting rafter, uh, beam supporting purlin and purlin supporting rafter, column, beam, rafter, um, uh, purlin and rafter, right? This system is called a tai liang, tai liang structure. Uh, literally, it means raising beams, right? Indeed, you know, you have the beams being raised horizontally, one on top of the other. That's called a tai liang structure. Another type <coughs> is called a Trundle. Uh, literally, that means piercing pillars. Right, so this system is different from this one in that the purling is not supported by beam, rather, the purling is supported directly by the column. So it's that direction. In another word, you know, the post and the lintel goes um, on the, you know, let's call this the, the y axis and this the x, x axis, right? <clears throat> so the, the column directly supported the purlin <clears throat> while those beams are just tie beam. Those, those beams are like this beam. You know, this beam, different from this one, this beam is not structural in that it is not load bearing. Well, it is structural, it's not load bearing, it's just connecting those columns. It just fix those columns in their position to create a grid, right? So it's, that's called a tie beam. So in the Trundle system, all beams are tie beam. They are not load bearing. The load bearing <coughs> structure is directly from the column to the purlin, and that its purlin is along this kind of a, um, y axis, y dimension. And then um, the upper structure is the same, so the purlin support those raptors. Right? <coughs> now, obviously, the trundle system cannot produce large columnless space because you know you need many columns so um, <clears throat> for a five purlin deep structure you need five column for a seven purlin deep structure you need a seven column but for tai liang <clears throat> You know, for a, in this case, this is a six purlin deep structure, you know, five purlin on the main structure. And then there is another purlin to add a corridor, to add a veranda. You just need a three column, right? But for the Trundle system, you actually would need a six column. Uh, well, um, actually, this is a um, seven party because there's another veranda also added on the other direction, right? It's a seven party. Um, seven party. <clears throat> so you would need <coughs> um, seven column 
in the uh, trundle system, but here you just need uh, four. But the benefit of trundle is it has less um, <clears throat> requirement for the material. You don't need a big uh, log like in the Thailand system, all right? So you can use smaller um, wooden log, but Thailand obviously can produce um, grander interior space. So Thailand is used for um, higher rank building and the trundle is usually used for <clears throat> lower rank building. In terms of construction <coughs> process, excuse me, Thailand and Chuando are also very different. <coughs> In Thailand system, <coughs> you lay out the lower um, layers of the building and you construct horizontally. You, you, you construct um, by adding those horizontal layers. So the uh, the growth of this building during construction process um, is goes in the um, vertical dimension. So you in the Thailand system you you create you know horizontal layers and uh, you know expand vertically. But for the Trando system. It is the opposite. The construction start from the core, but the entire height is ridged. You can construct a section like that and complete the building. And uh, you can expand it by adding those, those layers. So it, the, uh, the growth during the construction process process goes horizontal. In another word, you know, the building process goes like that. And then you add the roof. So totally different um, <clears throat> construction process and the pro and cons for each method. Uh, it's obvious. So this one, <coughs> you got a lot of columns in the in, in interior, but you can build a large building using small material. This one, you get a bigger interior space, but you do need a really large log, really large wooden material for the construction. Um, there are other... Um, building systems, uh, in addition to Thailand and Trundle, there are also Ganlan. Ganlan means a frame on stilt. Structure like that would be referred to as, as Ganlan or like that. <coughs> From the um, kind of architectural clay model. So the whole building is raised above a platform. And there is all another uh, type is called a jinggan, and the jinggan is basically log cabin. Uh, wooden log was used like a stone block, just pile the wooden block up. So it's jinggan is no longer porcelain lintel system. It's it's like using the wooden log like a you know a piece of brick or stone to pile them up to make a wall and a roof. But these two are um, insignificant compared to the previous two. So these are the major type and uh, used, Thailand especially used for high level official construction. Uh, that is also the system we introduced mostly <coughs> in this lecture and also in Ying Zhao Fa Shi, focus mostly on this Thailand system. So that just put that into the context of traditional Chinese architecture in general. So 
um, another pair of terminology offered in Ying Zhao Fa Shi is Dian Tang versus Ting Tang. Um, <clears throat> Dian Tang is kind of a more comparable to the Tai Liang system. It's straightforward, you know, using this system of raising those load bearing beams. While Ting Tang somehow makes the Tai Liang system with the uh, Chuan Dou system. So this would be would be um, referred to as a Ting Tang style, in which you can see, um, structurally speaking, you know there are there are you know columns supporting beams, but there are also <coughs> significant amount of tie beam, like in this this one. This this would this would be a trundle. Right, because that beam is is inserted into um, that column, so it's uh, uh, related to the central structure. It is a tie beam, um, and um, so <clears throat> it is like a hybrid. Right, the structure goes both, um, it has those Tai Liang structure in the core, but then a significant amount of structure is kind of a constructed horizontally from the center, expanding to the side, right? Um, the former mere corridor in the Dian Tang style is also incorporated into the main building. So that's the that's a key difference. <laughs> and again, um, the Dian Tang would be a higher level construction. You know, that's that structure is used for higher rank buildings. <clears throat> and the benefit is also quite obvious because that was capable of creating grand interior space. <clears throat> so, um, so here we have a illustration, three-dimensional illustration showing a Song Dynasty palace style Tai Liang frame, right? So we have these, um, you know, columns and uh, and beams and rafters uh, and purlins and rafters, right? And brackets were used to make the transition uh, between the vertical column and the horizontal beams. <clears throat> so um, a major benefit for the Tai Liang system is to allow the roof to be constructed curved because the um, roof structure is horizontally, uh, is, is layered, um, it's vertically layered, right? You have those horizontal members piled up vertically and you can adjust the height of the purlin. You can adjust the height of the purlin to create a different curve different curve. And uh, <clears throat> that roof curve is referred to as ju zhe in traditional Chinese architectural carpentry. It came from different way that curve is calculated. In the Song Dynasty, they use the zhe method, which means bending down. So in the Song Dynasty, they would first set the general height of the roof. Say the this is a ridge purlin, and uh, <clears throat> um, and this is the height of the eave. 
So that height from the ridge purling, from the top of the ridge purling to the bottom of the eave is usually a fourth or a third of the distance between the two eave purling, right? So this would be called the ridge purling. Ridge purling. And this is called the uh, eave purling. And then those are the purlins in between. So the first set <clears throat> set the general height of the ridge purling and then <clears throat> bend down. So they would have a method, have a rule about how much you bend down for the second purling from the top. They would give you a dimension telling you if you make a straight line between the ridge purling straight line and the eave. <coughs> um, <coughs> that they will give you a, you a regulation about that distance you need to bend down for the second purling, the third purling, they give you another dimension. So you start from a general height and bend down. That's called a zhe. During the Qing Dynasty, they use a different method called a ju, which means raise up, raising up. So in the Qing Dynasty, instead of giving you a general height of the uh, ridge purling, it just tells you how much it start from the bottom going up. Song Dynasty, the curve was created from the top coming down. And the Qing Dynasty, they start from the lower part. The regulation is that it gives you, tells you how much, how high the second purling from the bottom needs to be raised. So they give you that dimension. So you, um, you follow that rule to calculate and create the height of the second purlin, the height of the third, third purlin, and then the height of the fourth one, and eventually the height of the ridge purlin. So you basically calculate from bottom up. But in both cases, the um, roof, the purling, you know, either, either rule you follow, you would create a curved roof. So it is the rule, the number of calculation is given in a way that you would create a, um, a bent line and that would eventually become a curve when you, after you apply the roof uh, material. So they have specific way. And uh, in Ying Zhao Fa Shi, it gives the specific regulation and the formula for how to, how to calculate the height of the purlin to create a curved roof. And the, the Qing Dynasty method was given in um, another very important book uh, called the Qing Shi Ying Zhao Zhe Li. And that was published in the uh, 18th century. Uh, but we are not going to look into that. <clears throat> so the, this one is given in Ying Zhao Fa Shi, basically. And that one uh, comes from the Qing Dynasty um, architectural standard book. So, um, and in in both system, the bracket was a significant part um, of the publication. 
And um, for the rest of the lecture, we will focus on the bracket system and we will look at how the bracket system um, perform a function way uh, more comprehensive and way more significant than merely structural or decorative. Um, so we'll stop here today.